So I'm glad everyone came today. Uh, my name is Ken Gibbons. I'm with North American Bank Card, and I've been um, asked to give this presentation to amplify credit union business members so that you can know more about the EMV chip technology that's coming down the line. And so I've been giving this presentation for about a year and a half uh, to any group that'll stand still for me. Uh, Texas Society of CPAs, Boy Scouts Council, Girl Scouts Council, uh, CFOs of Travis County. So it's just informational and educational. I, I call it, and I was just trying to be funny again, I don't know if I'm very funny, but the chips are coming, or what's, what's best, chips or strips? <clears throat> so a uh, little background on me, I've been in the industry for 23 years, uh, here in the Austin area, um, member of several card trade associations, uh, give educational classes, and most recently I've been asked to be an expert witness and do some testimony uh, in the industry. So that's kind of fun to get to dress up and, you know, stand in front of a judge. So EMV was developed uh, back in the 90s, and it stands for EuroPay, MasterCard, and Visa. Uh, it's, it's just an open standard for the world to be able to process transactions, no matter where you go, using the same technology. Uh, we've all had situations where, well, why did this company make it this way and this company make it this way? Well, the world just kind of got together, or Visa, MasterCard, and, and EuroPay got together and made this seamless. Um, they are really just to uh, make sure that uh, everyone can use their cards anywhere, and they use microprocessor technology, which is much safer than magnetic strips. Now, uh, the benefits, number one, is to uh, limit our fraud and reduce fraud in the country, which costs a lot of money for everybody involved. Uh, using this global infrastructure, uh, I'll show some slides in a moment that point out the world has been doing this for years and we're the last to get on the bus. Uh, we're number one at being last at this point. So, um, and why is that? Well, uh, it comes down to, uh, I always just say it's two reasons, either politics or money, or money and politics. Both? Probably so. Okay. Uh, the banks, the financial institutions, uh, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discovery said money. But, you know, that's always tied to something else. So it's just the, the cost to put this out through the marketplace. And, in fact, there's some things that are even, in my opinion, cutting some corners that other countries are not doing. So we're getting on the bus, but we're not getting on the front of the bus. We're getting somewhere in the middle with technology. So I'll just kind of cover some of those options. Um, as it says there, the great expense, that's what was, what was put off. Just, you know, just didn't want to spend the money and, and roll it out to a very large country with a lot of business owners. 80% um, of the world, 130 plus countries, accept chip cards and have for five plus years, some 15 years. Um, in the U.S., we have 27% of all the credit card volume, which is pretty impressive, but because we don't have EMV technology, we have almost 50% of the world's fraud because we're not doing it right, so who are the hackers and the fraudsters going to go after? The country that's not, you know, living up to those standards. Um, the delivery channels, uh, we have been sending out this equipment, setting people up on this equipment, uh, the hardware, the software, uh, for well, uh, like two years now. And then uh, uh, rogue, I call them sales organizations, have taken that opportunity in the last certainly the last 18 months, to overcharge, to not always be upfront and truthful about the situation. And so I just tell people that are interested in, in upgrading or needing to upgrade, contact your credit union, your bank, your current processor you trust. Uh, don't buy it on e eBay or Amazon because you don't know where it came from and it could have some other little things in there that could cause you havoc. The goal was to have everybody compliant by October 1st, 2015. Um, as of this last week, a report stated that 27% of businesses are actually uh, accepting the EMV cards, but only about 33% of, of the customers, you and I, have a card with a chip in it. So the technology is really just rolling out. We're saying the October 1st deadline wasn't a deadline, it's the starting gate. It's where we're starting out. Um, as it shows here on chips around the world, maybe you can't see this really well, but you know, 
here in South America, 55% of all the terminals are accepting chip cards. In Canada, 84%. So you can see even around the world, even Africa, and some of the more remote places, they're up almost to 50%. Now, uh, the cards aren't as prevalent in those countries because there aren't as many people with cards. Uh, uh, just because uh, credit cards, debit cards aren't as prevalent in the smaller countries or the outlying areas, uh, what we call the, the, the second tier. Now, this used to say, will European travelers have a challenge using their chip card in the U.S.? Well, now it's, it's both ways. Will you have a tr uh, any trouble if you don't have a chip card and you travel to Mexico or Canada? Uh, all the cards still have a magnetic strip on the back of them. And in some ways, that kind of defeats the purpose of the chip card, but it does give everyone access to be able to, to use their card wherever they might travel. A European Payment Council is talking about getting rid of all magnetic strips, but I think they're kind of waiting on us to get on board before they can do that because there's a lot of European travelers to the U.S. Now, how does it address fraud? Well, uh, the secure microprocessor is dynamic. Each transaction is unique. So that even if someone had a skimmer or a device in a card reader and it, and it took your information, it wouldn't take your card number, your name, or other information. It just takes the transaction data. So they can't really do a lot with that. Whereas magnetic strips, uh, if, if you swipe your card in a device, that data is your name, your address, your card number, the three digits on the back, some other data, and they can replicate those and produce a thousand cards overnight and send them anywhere so that you're getting, you know, people are taking your money. So that's the main purpose that magnetic strips are no longer what's considered to be secure. Um, tokenization is a term that's used and I had to really study on that, what did that mean? And that is just that there's a token on each transaction that makes it unique. Uh, uh, a flag, uh, some sort of a device that allows that transaction to be different and it encrypts it and then the system de-encrypts it back for the, for the approval. Um, the second way is the card is inserted into the card reader by the consumer. That's the way it should be. If you go to your big box stores, your, your office depots, your home depots, etc., they have what's called forward-facing credit card terminals so that you, you have been swiping your card and your PIN number. Well, they also are upgrading where you insert the chip card into the bottom, and it takes anywhere from 5 to 10 seconds for that card to be read, depending on their hardware, and if they're communicating on a phone line or an Internet line. That phone line will slow it down also. But the purpose is to always keep the card in the hand of the consumer so that, so that they don't give it to this very nice waiter or waitress who then can, I'll be back in a moment with your ticket, and in the meantime they can have a, a, a little card reader that's smaller than my cell phone in their belt, in their top pocket, and swipe it before they make the purchase. Now they've captured your information. And now at the end of the day, they can upload that to what's called the, the black market internet and sell those for $25, $30 a piece. So even restaurants are having to upgrade one company, Chili's for example. They came out about a year ago with little kiosks or tablets that you can play games on, order, but you can also make payment right there. So they're one of the few companies that really got ahead of the curve. So restaurants are going to have to to figure out how they're going to do that because that's an expensive proposition. Uh, instead of one machine, they have to have one for each waiter or waitress or, you know, round robin. I need the machine, you know, and I'm busy. So, you know, it's kind of a, a pain there for them. Um, even if fraudsters, and it's kind of a repeat, even if fraudsters are able to steal your data, it's not duplicatable. Um, I've gotten some cards and I've, I've actually cut them up and busted out the chip and played scientist, tried to take it apart, you know. And the way it works is even a, a computer technician, once they take this chip, they can't replicate it. They can't get information out of it because it's uh, tied in with that tokenization 
into the right kind of terminal. Uh, this is a, a standard credit card terminal for a countertop. Uh, it has the magnetic strip on the side, but it has a slot in the bottom. Most terminals out there today have a slot because they were manufactured in Europe and they're used in Europe, but the chip technology wasn't turned on in the machines. So the U.S. has to get a whole new version of terminals to do that with. So this is a countertop terminal, but in the same way, it, they have them that like this, a little smaller maybe, that have a wireless capability. Just put the card in, run the transaction, it even says remove the card, and hand the terminal back to the clerk. So it's, it's really uh, trying to make it intuitive, much like an ATM or, or other things that we, we just follow the instructions, you know, like, what do I do next? Tell me. Um, on October 1st, as I mentioned, all merchants and consumers were expected to have chip card technology either in their pocketbook or wallet and at their stores. Um, the big difference here for a merchant, why do you need to upgrade if you're in a retail environment? Well, it used to that if I had a stolen card in my business, I would be out the product or service that I gave them. You know, whether it's a meal or a pair of shoes, it's gone. Plus, there was usually a $25 to $50 fee charged by the processing company for that issue. Well, now, uh, Visa MasterCard is kind of like washed their hands, and American Express and Discovery have washed their hands and said, issuers, card issuers, the people that make the card, that issue the card, you're responsible for fraudulent transactions. Well, guess what they did? They pushed it down to the merchant level. So five years ago, you'd set up a, I would set up a business with credit card processing. All they would do is start taking payments and, you know, wasn't that much to learn, not much uh, risk. Well, now, if you take a magnetic strip transaction as of October 1st and that transaction is fraudulent, stolen, etc., counterfeit, you are responsible not only for the product that walked out the door, but also Visa has, and MasterCard have said they will probably do an audit, which is over $1,500. They might fine you several thousands of dollars. Um, the original cardholder, whose information was stolen and put on that card, or the card was stolen from them, if that crook went to 10 businesses and cost him thousands of dollars, and maybe loss of reputation, loss of other uh, significant data or uh, uh, financial ruin or, you know, challenges, they can sue all those merchants because they were not using the most secure technology. So it's a carrot and a stick kind of thing. Now, the other side is if you do upgrade, Visa, MasterCard, and the issuer say, merchant will even pay you back for the product that walked out the door. In other words, if you have a chip card and for some reason it's a fraudulent transaction which they say can't happen, they'll cover everything. So they're promoting that you'll be super safe if you take te a chip technology, and if you don't, you are on the back list. And you'll be in big trouble with that liability shift. Right, question for that. Sure, questions. As long as the chip cards continue to have the magnetic strip, mm -hmm. they have the exact same possible fraudulent activity. Mm -hmm. um, how are they combating that? Uh, the other the other side of it is if it's an only chip card mm -hmm. and they use it for an internet purchase, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the chip doesn't actually you know provide any safety. Then. Right. So so second question first. Huh. This has no relationship to telephone orders or internet orders. This is only retail face to face swipe transactions. So so that. It, it, it's just the same tech, you know, there's nothing new. Now, they are talking about coming out with a uh, every laptop coming out or, or a device that you can attach to your laptop that would read your chip card for an online transaction, which is under development. So there is some plans in that area, but nothing's come up, How you know, so far. How far away is that technology? Pardon? How far away is that technology? Big question mark. Okay. Yeah. They've been, oh, no. they've been at this, uh, you know, Europe's been taking cards for 15 years and they've been wanting to do that. I'm sure there's people that have the technology, they just haven't set it up or they're not ready to roll it out or it's still under test. In terms of the magnetic strip, 
Um, the transaction system, whatever the system is, will know if it's a magnetic strip transaction or a chip transaction. Right. So once again, if it's a stolen transaction, a stolen card, and it's swiped, and it's bad, the system knows that, oh, you took it in the wrong fashion. So um, the idea is that we get totally chip ready for everybody, but uh, Europe has, you know, until, until the whole world's on board, they really can't get the, rid of the magnetic strips. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, you can see that uh, in the U.S. there was a timeline, and they had dates and, and markers. The one thing I will point out here is in October 2017, that's when fuel merchants and some ATM systems, ATM machines, have to be upgraded. But right now they don't have to be. Also because probably of the cost, because it's more expensive, it's more hardware to uh, you know integrate that kind of thing. So if you if you have a truck stop or a gas station, you have a couple more years to, to wait. Once again, the liability shift is just, in short, uh, and this is their verbiage, uh, the party that has made an investment in the most secure options is protected from financial liability for card present, card present, card fraud losses. And alternatively, the party that has not made the investment is 100% liable for those losses. And that's right off from their, uh, their statements from Visa and MasterCard. What's the proven impact? Well, countries implementing this have uh, shown great decrease in fraud and losses such as this. Great Britain, as it says, losses at UK retailers fell 67%, uh, stolen card fraud by 58%. I like the Canadian one because it was a short term, uh, shorter term of, of uh, success uh, from uh, 09 to 12, which is maybe three, four years, it dropped from 142 down to 38 million in losses. So that's, that's big, that's big numbers. And those losses are calculated from individual losses, credit union losses, bank losses, merchant losses, you know, all that tied in together. So it's a really good technology. It's just getting it out there and getting it adopted for everyone to use. That's the challenge. So let's talk about contactless. Um, anyone have Apple Pay, Google Wallet? Walmart's coming up with their own brand called C Currency or something like that. So contactless is where a app is on your phone. You call up the card that you saved in that device. And instead of using your card, you just tap your phone, either tap it or get it near within three to five <coughs> centimeters of the device. And it pulls the technology out of the system. It also has the same uh, dynamic unique transaction, the tokenization, and they're saying that it's just as safe, sometimes even safer, than the actual card with the chip in it. Um, the big reason that uh, the industry of retail will start accepting this primarily is because it's faster. Let's say I run a fast food restaurant or a convenience store, and it's lunchtime and there's seven people in four lines, or two lines. If each transaction takes five to 10 seconds to wait for that chip to finish its process, the last guy in the line, he's three or four minutes behind the first person, and he may not get his, he may have to run, eat in the car, whatever, you know, it's just a slowing of the, of the system. So with contactless, it is literally one second. You just touch it and boom, it's printing out the receipt. So that's why major retailers, Walmart, Target, are coming up with their own technology or, or joining forces with Samsung, AT&T, the, the phone providers, to use this technology uh, to their benefit to speed up the process. I wonder what happens if you lose your phone. People are always misplacing their phone. Yes. So, <laughs> that was my next question. Too. Yeah. So, so that certainly is the, a, a question that everyone asked, and, and what I've been, what I've learned, what I've been told, is that it's also unique, so that you have uh, two sets of passwords to get into that application, and if you know, of course, that your phone is missing, which you know, uh, it's kind of like your, your car keys. Where are my car keys? I need to make a phone call and shut down the app as 
well as shut down the phone from that process. So um, for that reason, layers of, of security, uh, losing the phone, you know, it, it, it could cause some problems, but you can shut it down remotely just like that. So. Um, if you have shared devices, uh -huh. um, such as your iPad and your iPhone are in sync, mm -hmm. or either Samsung ta uh, tablet and their phone, right. are you able to use that same um, sync app using your iPad? You know, I am not sure about that. I think that if the if the tablet has a data plan attached to it, mm -hmm. not just a, a Wi-Fi capability, but has a true cell phone data plan, it probably can be. But that's a question I'm not sure about. Okay. Because sure. that kind of is a concern if you have the family shared, 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 mm -hmm. cloud, shared, <laughs> shared. Mm -hmm. So I'm not quite understanding the security mm -hmm. in a fast. Case, yeah. You know. Well, um, yeah, and so that's a great question. And, and as all this contact has really starts rolling out, because right now Apple Pay is the primary leader. Mm -hmm. uh, there's others out there. Uh, I imagine there's multiple. Okay, you have a passcode for your card. Someone else has a passcode for their tablet, even though it might be shared. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure about that. Good question. I have a Make question uh -huh. about um, the customer's information from a retailer's point of view. Mm -hmm. In these terminals, when you take a card, the retailer doesn't retain any of that information of the customer, correct? Correct. The, the technology about seven, eight years ago made the equipment, it had no uh, saving device, it was just a, a communication system. So yeah, none of that saved in the newer machines that are really all out there today. And the newest machines won't, won't save that data either. Is that true as far as uh, these little swipers that don't print a receipt send it directly to whatever email you want? Correct. Is that it, it, saved it by, by the, having a receipt? The email is saved not on the phone or the device, but saved in the server. Mm -hmm. So when you connect to a customer, uh, they've been in one time to see you and they come back another time, and oh, the, the email appears automatically. It's not on the device, right. it's on the server sending it back to you. Okay, but I mean, does that make you liable for having captured their information? Well, you're not, you're, you're, you're not really capturing to keep it, so you're not liable. It's okay. just but, passing you through. But it's a two-way street. Because you don't keep that information, it's not resident, and you can't access that information, you can't use that information for marketing purposes. And okay. so the, the challenge is you want to know who your customers are. And it would be really nice to, in one seamless transaction, not only have a customer list that you can market to, but also um, you know, process their, their payment. And you can't do it with this technology. Right, well, you're not supposed to do it anyway. Well, that's, I what, understand it. that's what Square um, claims to be able to do. Right, and, and I've, uh, like for example, the the system that Chris has, which is called PhoneSwipe, which is our version of a Square product. It plugs into a tablet or phone. If I'm a customer, like I go to a luncheon every, once a month, and I pay, well, after I went the first time, every time I swipe my card, and they hit, you know, does he want a receipt, my email shows up. It's the only data that it does save, okay? And it's not saved on the phone. Once again, it's saved in a storage place away. Square which is kind of, uh, I've been told by other technologists that it's not a very good safe technology, and that is, if I buy a product from one square merchant, and I give them my email address or my phone to get a text receipt, and I go to another square merchant, they know it. And the second merchant doesn't have to re-enter my information. So um, that is questionable in my opinion as to, as to what else are they sharing between merchant to merchant? Well, yeah. see, but that's the point. You as a merchant, because I have a Square account um, for a couple of nonprofits, and we can't get that access. I mean, I have to ask them, can you give me your email address on this form, mm -hmm. you know, and, and my you know, email mailing list form? Because even though they pay with a, a card and their information is on the card, there's no way for me as a, as a merchant there to capture that information and market to them. They have another it. section 
um, because we have one at the salon. And you can and you can and they have a client list also with appointments and everything. It doesn't capture payment information, but it just gives you their email and phone number and identity and history and, and, and history. And history. Well. But so I have a, a client who has a similar problem, a uh, similar system. But when they wanted to migrate from one system to the other and take their customer list, they couldn't get that that's customer the catch. list. That's the catch. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's, that's the catch. Yeah. So, so we don't so own that it, 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 don't like, don't it, it's saved it's somewhere don't. else. Yeah. It's in yeah. a cloud. <laughs> yeah. It's on the Square Cloud, yeah. if you would, sure. or the Processors Cloud, and uh, you know that's their that's their way of keeping you sticky or hooked right. to their service. But yeah. they wouldn't have had that then if it weren't for you. Mm -hmm. well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the convenience. That's the convenience. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know how this, how the chip technology helps to protect against that because although there's, they have a, a chip reader mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. and um, but do you still have the same capabilities of collecting data? Yeah. It, I would say that um, the name phone number, mm -hmm. uh, email address are probably considered to be non-threatening or non-specific to a hacker, you know, in, the, you? in the world of Visa MasterCard, right. but the number, the expiration date, things like that, that's what the technology will right. encrypt. Okay. My wife wants to shred junk mail because it has her name and address, and I say, hey, that's in the phone book. Right. It's public information. <laughs> <laughs> it's not being yeah, yeah. So maybe that's what it is. Everybody, uh, you know, everybody, your wife is a good example, are concerned about the, 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 the fraud and the theft and identity. I was at a truck stop uh, in April in West Texas. Put my card in, it wouldn't work. Put another card, it worked. I went inside and said, why didn't this card work? I don't know. And the next day I had five charges from five different places in the world for a dollar. Right. Somehow they had a skimmer on that truck stop reader, fell out in the truck, picking them up and sending them to whoever. And, you know, I was able to, you know, luckily the card company are very sharp these days. And they go, you're not in Malaysia and Great Britain in the same place. And you're in Alpine, Texas. Come on. So they canceled stuff like that. Um, so, you know, one, two, three, the three steps to compliance. You need the hardware. Uh, you have to make sure that it's uh, uh, hardware safe and it's, in, it's talking to the right system. Um, do you need a tablet-based system? Uh, do you need a point-of-cell system? Or do you just need a simple countertop terminal? Uh, but once again, I just say, work with someone you know, someone you trust, someone that uh, you, you can get hold of. Uh, not not your Ebays, your Amazons, or your used equipment type thing. Is the countertop terminal portable so that I can take it from, I don't know, presentation to presentation? You can. You just have to plug it into a phone line or an internet cable Okay. in the smart. back. That's not smart. <laughs> yeah, okay. I did that for 20 years and finally said, uh, okay. so people use... aren't activating their phone lines anymore. They just yeah, always use it. their cell phone. Yeah. So do you have, is it wireless as well? Wireless we have one that looks very similar to this that is wireless. It has a built-in wireless system. Uh, it has the full-size printer capability and all the things like this does. But it can be taken. And that was what we used for food trucks and craft shows and electricians and plumbers and people that do home repair, things like that. And then, of course, came out with uh, these guys, the square knockoffs or square. And so now this is the mobile option that everyone likes. And it's very safe. I've not heard of any technology issues with this uh, over the last several years. But that technology is still the magnetic strip technology, mm -hmm. not the chip technology. Right. Uh, for example, uh, our company uh, is, once again, like I said, the technology is running and trying to catch mm -hmm. up. Uh, they have beta tested new readers. They uh, are going to start sending them out, what's soon? November, December, January? You mean uh, the actually readers that go on yes. smartphone? Yeah, 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 oh, in, 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 in the phone swipe system specifically. Okay. Uh, Square, I think they already have theirs out. Yes. Um, and it all goes back to the, the the bigger they are, the more technology and money they can put in something to get it out. And so Square beat everyone to the market in that area. 
it was just a matter of time until uh, you'll be getting a new reader at some point that accepts the chip cards as well for your business. Is, I don't want to jump ahead, oh, but, but is the um, purchase and acceptance of the new readers the only steps of compliance for us, or now with the I continue hearing the PCI DSS compliance mm -hmm. fees. Mm -hmm. Now, are they are they um, now weaved into the monthly fees, or I mean, where are all these fees coming from? That so PCI payment card industry mm -hmm. DSS is security. That was uh, something that started about four years ago. Right. Uh, an attempt to head in this direction as well, a safer technology. Um, PCI fees are mandated by Visa MasterCard and the processors typically pass that on. It's anywhere from uh, uh, seven, eight, ten, fifteen dollars a month or one hundred and fifty dollars a year in that ballpark. For whatever reason, and I've asked a lot of people, I haven't really gotten the right, well, I haven't gotten a good answer from my point of view, these guys hooked up to cell phones don't have to follow the, P don't, aren't liable or, or out there for the PCI issues. So you don't pay a PCI fee when you're using those. Whereas if you use one of these guys or a computer or a point of sale system or anything else, you have those PCI fees. It has something to do with the way the cell phones encrypt the data already. Uh, probably the same way that someone can't tap in and listen to your cell phone conversation. That uh, jumbles it all up and, and people can't hack into what you're saying if I'm getting, you know, telling somebody some secret numbers. So that's what I believe and that's what I've been kind of pointed towards. Um, but stay tuned, it's a new day. And PCI may start encompassing mobile devices as well pretty soon. Just don't know. Up until now, they've been hitting me with that fee and... I didn't have to. I didn't have to be PCI DSS compliant every some. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. And 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 the PCI requires every merchant. I've done. I've got a whole other presentation on that that I've been doing uh, previous years. Um, now every merchant has to answer an annual survey, a self-assessment questionnaire, to to and pass it based on the questionnaire that they're compliant. Mm -hmm. If you're not. Then they start charging a non-compliance fee of $20 a month, $30 a month, something like that, right. until you make that call and get that done. Uh, but most of the process, at least the company that I, we work with, we outbound to people and say, you need to do your PCI compliance. Can I help you right now? Mm -hmm. Here's the form. Here's the website. Please call us. Um, it, they don't look at it as a profit center. I think some companies do, but our company does not. We go, you need to be compliant because if you're not compliant, it looks bad on us. And if something bad happens, we'll be, you know, because we weren't keeping you compliant, we're in trouble too. So, it's another security thing that, uh, you know, it's, it's out there. And once again, merchants didn't have to do all this stuff a few years ago, but now in this marketplace, we do. We'll go to step two, software. Um, is it PCI security level encrypted? Uh, does it have the right drivers? Uh, does it have elements to interact? You know what? I am in marketing. I don't know any of those terms to know for sure. I can't tell you whether your equipment is or your equipment is. But once again, I, I rely on the technologist in our company to let us know, okay, this is the good stuff. This is the stuff you should market. Once again, step back to the trusted source. Try to find somebody that has backing to help you understand those terms, or at least, I don't understand it, but it's like, I don't, I don't have my car runs either, but I know that GM makes me a good car, I'll drive the car, you drive the machine in the same fashion. And then step three, the people part. Uh, be prepared for confusion. Um, uh, I've been confused, I mean, I, I, I try to talk to the clerk at, at the Walmart and say, why isn't your chip card reader working? She goes, I don't even know how that works, you know, I don't know, swipe it. You know, okay. uh, somewhere along the way, that that one's working over there, but this one isn't. You know, so when you're out there, um, if you have employees, you just need to know to train them. And uh, we just did a, a fraud seminar with a certified fraud examiner with over 30 years' experience, 
And he said that 5% of all losses for businesses is from internal theft, fraud, or loss. And so if you're a business owner, you should put on the responsibility hat and know how all this works so that you can train them and you can watch over them and you can know what's going on. A lot of businesses, certainly the professional businesses, uh, doctors, lawyers, etc., they expect the office manager to do that. But in the same way, that office manager could be skimming some money out of your till and you don't even know it. Um, one thing that he always recommends, and, and I, I thought, you know, I've been saying this for years, I'm glad someone else is, anytime a void or a refund should be done, it needs to be password protected so that someone else has to look over that clerk's shoulder and say, yes, I confirm that. And you see that at the big box stores, right? The HEBs that need a manager, price check, you know, or fix this problem. Well, that goes for the uh, uh, business manager or business owner who's got four employees, and he's just so busy running his business, he goes, I hope they're doing it right. Well, you really got to be responsible in that nature and take care of that for yourself. So analyze your situation. Is it time to get uh, another device? Maybe go ahead and spend the money and get a, a nicer system, a point-of-sale system, a tablet-based system. Look, look at the options out there that are PCI and EMB compliant. Don't let urgency or fear uh, cloud your decision. Uh, don't let a, a scary phone call spook you into buying something that you may not know where it's coming from. Uh, we like to sit down face to face with all our customers. Uh, sometimes people say, no, I know who you are and I know where you're, you're affiliated with credit. You let's do it over the phone. I'm too busy, you know. But we like to know who we're talking with because there are merchants out there, guys, that try to steal from us, too. So we have our own little checking that we have to make sure that they're not doing anything wrong. Uh, becoming compliant and then learn the systems better than your employees so that you're in charge uh, don't let the, uh, like they say, the monkeys at the circus take over. Well, that's the end of my presentation. I have some materials for you guys to take away. Do you have any other questions? Y'all been a great question audience. You don't get many questions. It's really great to see conversation going on. I, I do have a question about um, use of the um, credit card over the internet and uh -huh. the telephone, because I'm going to be primarily a web-based business. Okay. What are my legal requirements mm -hmm. to protect against fraud, mm -hmm. and what is coming up to help me do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I guess the, the steps that, that we consider are very uh, important. Number one is uh, online sales. If you're, if you're delivering a product, or service, um, and it's of that great value to you. Uh, for example, shipping a computer, a four hundred or thousand dollar computer, and not your business, but another business. You want to be specifically sure that that's a the good transaction in several ways. Number one, uh, does everything match? Uh, on the online ordering systems, there are various levels of security. Some just ask for the card number, the name and address and the three digits on the back. They sometimes don't ask for the address or the zip code. That's an option. So when you're looking at getting an online transaction system of some kind, make sure that it's asking as many of those security questions. Turn it all on. Turn all the security features on. Don't opt anything out. Um, number two, if you are uh, concerned or you just want to be extra sure, Get a phone number, of course, and call that person right after they place the order or an hour later. Say, we'll be calling you in the next two hours before we ship the product to confirm your address. Well, you're actually confirming their identity, you know. Don't ship to P.O. boxes. Don't ship to hotel lobbies. Don't ship to civic centers, uh, you know, unknown physical addresses. And if you enter that information into the system, it should come back all match, or maybe zip code no match, three digit no match, you know, little digits on the back. If any of those things come back as no match or not matching, then you want to take an extra step, reach out back and say, hey, I know that you placed the order, the card went through. 
Because I have three addresses. Person, I have a P.O. box, an office, and a home. So if I goof up and give them the wrong information, it won't match. And I've had them call me on it and say, it's not matching. Oh, okay, that must be the card that's at my house. Here's, and they, it, it goes through. Get signed receipts if you're doing a delivery so that uh, it's not just left on the doorstep. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that you, you know that it got delivered, you know, for various purposes and various reasons. If you're delivering a product that is internet-based, you're sending them a download, okay? Certainly, that is a value to you, but maybe you're not at, at, at a great loss if those kind of things should happen. <clears throat> but those rules should still apply. Check and double-check. You know, the old saying of measure twice and cut once, you know, when you're doing carpentry or something like that. The same thing. You know, trust, but verify. And that can be time-consuming, but it can be well worth it. Making a phone call, making sure the email is correct, you know, those kind of things. Just kind of common sense. A lot of people open up a store online, start selling things, and, oh, look at the money we're making. We're so busy. Computer store here in Austin two years ago did all the things that we suggested, did all the things they thought were right, and shipped ten thousand dollars of computers to Romania. No. Guess what? Card was bad. Couldn't do anything about it. You know. So just making sure you do everything that's that's those items and that's common sense as well. You know. Because sure. as a merchant I don't see the information you're telling me to verify. How do I know whether the zip code doesn't match? So the online system that you get, <coughs> whether it uh, whichever online gateway, uh, authorized.net is a good one. They have multiple layers of, of security credentials, and it will ask for billing address of card, billing zip code of card, and, and when you hit go, when you hit submit, it will come back and it will either say it doesn't match, or sometimes you can set it to decline that transaction because it doesn't match. So you'll know, it'll say zip code doesn't match. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> on the machine here, if I even take a phone order and I key it in, and, and it asks for their, the, the, the street address, you know, 410 Main, so that's for 410. Zip code, 78701. If those don't match, on the bottom of the receipt, it will go through, but it will say zip code no match, or AVS no match, or CVV no match. And if it's a phone order, you're usually like shipping it or someone's gonna pick it up. If I tell businesses, look, if it says that, Call them back and get it right. You know, confer, try to confirm that information, especially if it's an expensive product. If it's picking up a pizza, oh well. But if it's picking up a two thousand dollars worth of windows yeah. or or window frames or shades, you know, then you ought to be extra careful. Well, that happened to me um, last week. As a matter of fact, um, I went in to pay a, a business expense, and I pulled out. I was in a hurry. Pulled out my my card, I pulled out my personal card and yeah. keyed in all the numbers and everything. And it wouldn't take it, wouldn't take it. I'm thinking, this is odd. But I said, okay, I'm in a hurry, I'll worry about it, you know, later. Uh -huh. And about 30 minutes later, I get a call from, um, it was another credit union, but mm -hmm. uh, I get a call and said, are, are you trying to make this transaction because we saw it come in twice, mm -hmm. none of the information matches, mm -hmm. um, do you really want to authorize this? Yeah. And, and, you know, explain the whole problem. Sure. So you're absolutely right. They're well, and, and to the benefit of the banks and credit unions and card issuers, they are, they are setting up logarithms and dynamic data so that you know, they know when something goofy is going on. Did you really make this transaction? I, every time I set up a terminal, I use my card to run a one penny test. Well, I had to tell them, there's going to be a lot of one penny <laughs> tests like several times a week. You know, because I want to make sure it goes through. And so now they have a note on my account. They don't call me every day like they used to <laughs> because they know that I'm this knucklehead out there spending a penny at all these different businesses, you know. So there's, but they're very smart like that. And I'm glad they are because it's protecting all of us. All right. But I think you had a second part to your question was even though you get all of that information and type it all in, you're still liable if it comes back. Problem. Yeah, and, and and that's right. Okay. Well, and, and on, a, on an online transaction, she's still only liable for the loss of the product. But but if it was a chip trans retail chip transaction, you could be liable for a lot more. So 
Chip technology is specifically for retail currently. Now, in, um, in Karen's case, there's going to be a two-layered system. First, mm -hmm. there has to be a um, subscription base. You have to open an account, and there'll be a verification process there. Mm -hmm. And then that will have to match the, the credit card. Mm -hmm. So you'll have a double system. Yeah. Still worried about giving away the store. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> I'm not so worried even if I lose a thousand dollars in window coverings. That's you know that's the cost of doing business. Mm -hmm. What I'm worried about is what Kenneth explained that it's a fraudulent car being used in a bunch of places. It harms some consumer, and he launches a uh, 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 a lawsuit. Yeah, against all those businesses. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't I can't afford it. Right. Yeah. Even to hire the lawyer to protect you against the lawsuit is going to cost way more yeah. than any of my Yeah, protection. I mean, you look, look at the target breach last, you know, holiday. Yeah. Um, they, they, they should have been, they should have been fined and etc. so much. It should have made them hurt. Mm -hmm. But Bezos said, oh, you do so much volume with us, we're going to just kind of slap you on the hand. Get your stuff together. We're going to slap you. But they won't slap you. Right. Oh, They'll come on you like a ton of ricks because your volume isn't nearly what the big guys are. Right. So once again, you know, politics and money, you know, it all boils down to how big you are. And so we all just have to watch our backs. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they, they will, ha I just want to get clarity on it. So they will hold us liable, although the information um, is stored in a capacity that we have no control over. You just don't have the verification. Exactly. If it, it, it bot, bottom line is, if it's if it's a chip transaction, as of October first, you're good as go. If it's a magnetic strip, even if that chip wasn't on the card, even if that customer didn't have a chip card to use, mm -hmm. it's a magnetic strip. Yes. You are still out on the hook now. You got to go back to common sense as well. How many stolen cards have you had in your business in the number of years you've been in business? Probably zero.